Kevin Peterson was born on the 27th of June, 1980, in Peter Maritzburg, South Africa. From a young age, he was very athletic, partaking in many different sports. Unfortunately, at the age of just 11, he suffered a forearm injury, which meant that he wasn't able to play rugby. But alongside cricket, he continued to play hockey, tennis and squash as well. When he was 17, his brilliant batting ability, among everything else, allowed him to make his first class debut for NATO's B team, a province in South Africa. But very quickly, he would leave his country in order to play for England instead. Why would he do this when South Africa was a powerful team? This was due to his unhappiness with the racial quota system that was present there. Introduced in 1999, this made it so that a minimum number of black cricket players have to be included in every match. This upset Peterson, as he believed that cricketers should be selected for the national team based on their skills and merit alone, not race. And as his mother was English, he was able to sign a deal with Nottinghamshire to play county cricket in England. He continued to play there for the next four years, seeing great success. And on November the 28th, 2004, he would play in his debut international game. This ODI match was against Zimbabwe, and he made a decent starting impression, taking 27 runs of 47 balls. But in his T20I debut, he was the center of focus. In this game, he took 34 of 18 and caught the first three batsmen out. His assist with England's 100-run win resulted in him becoming the player of the match. Just a month later, he played his first test match, which was the first game in the 2005 Ashes series. He scored the highest number of runs in his team in both innings, taking 57 of 89 and then 64 of 79. His career was taking off, and he was getting recognition from everywhere. And with each game, he further proved to everybody that he was a capable player. Looking at his test records from 2006 to 2008, his average was consistently above 50. It's no stretch to say that at the time, he was one of the greatest England batters. In 2008, recognising his abilities, Peterson was made the captain of the England ODI and test teams. But very quickly, there would be issues. Peter Moores was an England cricket coach at the time of Peterson's captaincy, and so naturally they had to work together. But it didn't take long for them to have disputes. They were both in disagreements with the running of the team, including team selection, training regimes, and the leadership style. He's a nice guy, but it's like a human triple espresso. So intense. Being described as the woodpecker by Peterson, he insinuated that Moores was too overbearing for the players and giving them insufficient rest. On the 7th of January 2009, as a result of all of this, Peterson resigned as captain, with Moores being sacked on the very same day. While this wasn't enough to shake him of his career, this situation, along with the racial quota, shows how confrontational Peterson gets when he finds something at fault. It's easy for him to publicly voice his opinion, and he's done so several times, like when he criticised Nick Knight or Graham Smith. He continued to thrive, and later on in the year, he would hit a test century in 88 balls, becoming one of the fastest English batters to hit a test century. In 2011 as well, he scored 227 runs in a test against Australia, his highest total. The removal of his captaincy didn't stop him from contributing to his team significantly, but soon, a bombshell would hit the England team. And right before I get onto that, if you're enjoying the video so far, then make sure to leave a like to show us your support. And if you have any ideas for future videos, then type them in the comments. Peterson had thrown a boomerang and it was coming right back at him. In 2012, it was revealed that he had been allegedly sending derogatory texts about his captain Andrew Strauss to South African players during their test series. And much more concerningly, it was reported that tactical information about how to dismiss him was being shared too. The exact texts weren't leaked and all of this is alleged, plus it's unknown how these texts were revealed in the first place. Of course, Strauss was saddened when hearing about the news. He said that he felt dumbfounded and how the team felt let down by his actions. I wasn't all that bothered about him sending texts to the South African players he knew quite well. I did, however, have issues with him criticising me to the opposition. That felt like talking out of school. Not to mention giving the opposition a way to drive a wedge between Peterson and myself and the team. And if he really had given information about how to get me out, well, that amounted to treachery and I would never forgive him. I am confident, in retrospect, that he did not give the South Africans information on how to get me out. 
This news was mainstream, causing even Shane Warne to make a public statement. It shouldn't have got to this. Peterson and Strauss could have gone down to the pub and had a beer and feed, and if they had to punch the absolute whatever out of each other, then so be it. If you have to get it out of your system, then do it. Then come back and put your arm around each other and walk out and play together. There are faults on both sides. I think there is a bit too much ego at the ECB. There is no give and take or compromise. The opinions on the scandal were mixed, with people taking up two different sides of the argument. I don't think he should have played for England again, and I said it at the time. If he was proven guilty to have sent the opposition those text messages, he shouldn't have played again. I felt like Kevin was hung, drawn and quartered over a mythological allegation. Yes, he might have been abusing Strauss to his mates in the other team, and that's unsavoury and unacceptable, but he wasn't giving tactical advice, and it was that which was used as the real stick to beat him with. Peterson addressed the issues, and apologised for his unsavoury actions, although he denied giving any tactical information to South Africa. Prior to the text messages in the same year, he retired from all forms of limited over cricket. But now, he was attempting to take it back and play more for England. I am wanting to play all three forms of cricket again for England. The ODIs against South Africa in a couple of weeks, and the T20 World Cup if I'm selected. I want to make myself available for every single format of cricket for England. I am absolutely not insisting on playing the full IPL season. I am taking that all back. I will not be playing the full IPL. I will come back and play in the tests against New Zealand next year. The mood in the dressing room in the last 24 hours has been sorted out. I had a really good long chat with a teammate of mine yesterday. We went through differences. We went through everything. I finished that conversation a very happy bloke and somebody who can't wait to meet with the team on Tuesday. But this wasn't entirely sorted out. See, as we've previously seen, once you lose somebody's trust, it's a lot harder to earn back. And while the rest of the team didn't do anything to provoke him, there was constant tension in the air. His relationships had been heavily strained. And because of this, he was dropped from the final test match in the series against South Africa. He was brought back on the team in October 2012 after his apology was recognised. But the tension still lingered around him. And in 2014, he was made aware that he was no longer being considered for international selection. Where is he now? Since 2014, he's played in different cricket leagues, like the IPL or the CPL. And in 2018, after a lengthy career, he decided to retire once again, due to fitness concerns as well as having other reasons. Since then, he's made appearances in media and does commentary as well. This story shows us just how important it is to respect your peers. And a lack of respect wasn't shown just from Peterson, assuming the allegations were true. It can be argued that he wasn't being listened to by anybody else. And feeling betrayed and trapped by his team, he decided that he had enough. It's important that we all properly listen to each other, to make sure we address any concerns and treat each other fairly. And had this issue been fixed from the start, Peterson's career may have taken a different turn. There was an opportunity there. Not necessarily to bring him in, but spend a lot more time with him and make sure his views were valued and considered. I think instead, I just let Kevin Peterson be Kevin Peterson. In retrospect, that was a mistake. I might have sowed the seeds for what was to come down the track. What do you think about this scandal? Was it worth giving him a second chance? Or were the consequences justified despite a crucial detail being alleged? Let us know what you think down below and make sure to share this video with a cricket enthusiast. And as always, make sure to tap the bell before you leave so you'll be notified the moment the next video comes out.